Hello everybody and welcome back to the Battle of Pulu in LEGO and today we're going to be giving away one of these custom printed Japanese flags. So this is printed on a LEGO 2x4 white tile so all you have to do to win this is comment, like, and subscribe and you will automatically be entered and I'll be picking the winner next week's episode. So without further ado, let's get started with the episode. Alrighty guys, so here is the Battle of Pulu in LEGO so far so there is a lot to go over in this week's episode as you can see i got in a couple of my orders that i was talking about i got in the order for the palm tree leaves and the cheese slopes so we're going to be going over that and we have we're really almost done with the actual mock now it's just figures and some artillery pieces so without further ado let's go in more detail and i'll show you what's been going on so first off if you haven't noticed i've put in a whole bunch of palm trees all of these are new and there's a couple more that you can't see over there. But basically, I got in an order of about 50 of these larger palm tree leaves. Now, those allowed me to make like bigger palm trees because all, all I had was the small palm tree leaves and they weren't really cutting it. So I got those in. It looks great. I'm thinking about adding maybe one or two more, maybe one there and one over there behind that Sherman tank. But Definitely, it really gives it some height to the mock, and it really makes it look bigger, and it makes like the troops look smaller and the tanks look smaller, which is awesome because it kind of gives a sense of scale of the battle. And then also, if you haven't, I don't know if you guys will notice, but I had like one, two, three palm trees in this area. I took them out and replaced them with my own design here of stacking the you know, one by ones with the studs on all sides and the cheese slopes. I replaced them with those because originally they were these, these old style palm trees. And they are cool because you can bend them and whatnot. But it was kind of out of place that I had a couple of them in the front of the mock that weren't matching with the rest. So I decided to swap them out and I think it looks pretty good as is. So I'm going to go into some more detail on what's been going on with the mock. So I believe it was last week's episode, there was kind of a cutout here that wasn't filled with grass because I ran out. I was able to find a bin, actually, I was just kind of cleaning out some boxes, and there was a whole bunch of grass stalks in there stacked up. So I was able to finish all of that, and I just had enough, so it was like a perfect amount there. And then what I did with that Sherman tank, with basically the same as the Shinhodo tank, is I kind of made the grass look like it's being pushed over by the tank, just to add some more realism to it. And uh, yeah, there's a couple more things I want to talk about with the Shinhodo tank, so let's go to that next. So, as you can see, I'm starting to add Japanese soldiers. Now, I'm going to be talking about those Japanese soldiers here in a minute, but basically, they don't have any weapons yet, which is fine, but I wanted to kind of put some in just to kind of see what it's going to look like and gauge what it's going to look like. So, as you can see, I have some trailing behind the tank using it as cover. They'll probably have Arasaka rifles. And then, if we pan the camera up, there's a couple more in the back. Like they're talking behind the bunker, one guy running up. And then if we pan the camera down, we got four of them running to this bunker. So overall, the figures are definitely adding a lot to the mock. There's a couple more. I'll show you where those are. But uh, there's going to be like 70 or 60. I think there's 70 total. So there's going to be a lot of Japanese soldiers running around and a lot of Marines to, you know, face them. So let's keep going. I also added the two Japanese for the two machine gunner kind of nests back here. Still waiting on the machine guns, so more to come for that. Another thing I added, which I think they look pretty good, is these custom little, they're not custom, but little barbed wire things. So basically you take a Lego chain and you all you do is twist it until it gets kind of taut and then you put it on like I put it on some one by one reddish brown cylinders because it looks kind of like a wood post. So I put two of them there, kind of like a little barrier that the Marines would have to go through. I think it just adds a little bit of realism. And then you've of course got the other barbed wire in front of the other bunker. I might do some more of that, I might not, we'll figure that out. All right, so now looking at the top of the mountain, the top of the mountain is actually going along pretty well. Now, I got my order of cheese slopes in, so if you haven't noticed, there's a bunch of the studs on the mountain that are being covered up, which is great. I don't have any more, I used up all 120 some of them. And uh, basically, I finished covering the top of the mountain with dark tan, and I'm starting to really like the dark tan look. I might add some maybe reddish brown into it, but overall, I was going to put in some green plates, just regular Lego green to make it look like grass, but I definitely kind of liking what I'm, I'm doing up here. And I got to be careful because these are these big 16 by 16 plates, and you can't push down on them too hard because if you do, the whole thing will collapse in, and then it's basically game over, so... I want to be careful, and like I said, I got some more figures up here to show you guys. So we got one with a, I believe it's a Type 97 machine gun. He's just shooting, I don't know, that's just kind of as a placement, just to see what it looked like. 
and then we got two over there, maybe an officer looking out, and then another guy behind him seeing what he's doing. And then if we pan the camera over further, look over here. So here's one of these little weapon stashes I made. So basically, it's like some wood pillars, and then they have a netting, and then some camouflage on top. Bunch of ammo crates, backpacks, sandbags, grenades, helmets, you name it, it's there. So I think that looks really cool. I might even do another one alongside of it. But I am working on a anti-aircraft gun to go over here. And then I want to do, like I said, the two mortars here. I could have a couple of machine gunners there. So let's just say that the top of the mountain will definitely be occupied. And uh, I think it'll turn out really good. So let's move on to the figures and the giveaway. Alrighty guys, so here are the brand new Japanese soldiers. Now there are 70 total here, obviously not. But I made 70 total. They're all pretty much the same except for the head. And then some of them have the Japanese armband printing here with the rising sun flag, but some of them don't. That's just because, I mean, I could go back and print all of them with it. I might actually do that now that I think about it. It just add a little bit more detail. But uh, here's what they look like. I guess I could zoom in on them a little bit more for you guys. So basically, it's very similar to the officers I did. Basically the same, just on regular, um, not sand green, but tan parts. And I definitely think they look pretty good. I gave them all a different face. So it's kind of, you know, unique instead of just giving them all like a smiley face or something. And then I'm working on Arasaka rifles and then hopefully some Japanese grenades. And then, like I said, those machine guns. So I'm going to flash a picture of the Arasaka rifle. It's just a render. It's not an actual physical item, but I'll flash it here now. So that was the rifle. Let me know in this poll. So click up on that card there and let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? And Picture that in a reddish brown color and possibly over molded to look more realistic, you know, with a gunmetal barrel and bolt and all that. So that's what's happening with the Japanese. So I printed all of them. Like I said, some of them have the armbands. There we go. And then they print all the way around the boots and then the back. Like I said, stretched out the torso design all the way to the belt so there's no blank spot. And I think they look really stellar. So let me know what you guys think of the Arasaka in that pole. Or in the comments down below, same with these Japanese soldiers. Let's get on with the last week's giveaway winner. All right, guys, so we're going to be picking the winner. I'll hit this button three times, and whoever is that name, all you have to do is personal message me here on YouTube, and I'll send you out those two propaganda tiles. So let's do it. So one, let it load. Okay, two, and three. All right, Ellie Wall, he says, awesome vid. Love what the mock has become so far. By the way, this is my entry. Well, you won, my f friend, so there's the name there. So all you have to do is personal message me here on YouTube, and I'll send those out completely free of charge no matter where you live. And if you want to enter to win next week's giveaway, all you have to do is comment, like, and subscribe on this YouTube channel and comment on this video and like on this video. So other than that, guys, that's pretty much it for the Battle of Palilu in LEGO week, I believe, 26 it is. And we are getting there. Like I said, more updates to do on figures like weapons and whatnot. Let me know what you guys think of that Arasaka, the new Japanese soldiers. And I'm ordering parts for Marines and some other stuff. So, yep, that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.